All right, guys, welcome back. So axis and deviation. Um, really, this this presentation could be called axis because it's a shorter version of one I've done in the past. And I just really want to give some people some basics on axis, okay? So um, one of the first questions I asked was, what is an axis? An axis is a physics term, okay? Um, axis vector. So we're talking about a force and we're talking about the direction in which it travels. We're talking about an electrical force and direction it travels through the heart. So uh, the way this kind of works, we have to go down to the basics again. So you guys remember Eindhoven's triangle when you went through cardiology. All right, it's the imaginary triangle created when an ECG is obtained. And when we look at this triangle, we can see a general direction of the electricity and how it flows through the heart. And it's what's commonly called axis. So axis is the direction of flow of electricity in the heart. That's the basics of it. Now, the way we get axis is we measure up all of the directions. We add up all the directions of travel and divide these numbers to get a general or average. Okay? And there are far too many electrical impulses to add or divide individually, and I'm going to explain that here in a minute. We measure this in the frontal plane. This is the view of the heart provided by the ECG from the front. All right? So the normal path of electricity travel must be known in order to understand what an axis is. Okay? So we have the sinoatrial node. The pacemaker goes to the AV node, bundle of hiss, bundle branches, and finishes out in the Purkinje fibers. All right. So the direction of travel should follow the cardiac nerves in a normal heart. So if you know your conduction system, you know which way this stuff is supposed to be flowing. And I've included a quick picture here of our uh, degrees and axis so you can see that if everything's normal, your typical axis should be at around 30 degrees. Right. That just follows straight down the, the bundle of hiss and the bundle branches. So this is the average direction, right? The usual direction of electricity flow in the heart should go from left to right, our left to our right, okay? The patient's right to left. So <clears throat> let's look at a couple things first. Axis is only representative of the electrical flow through the ventricles in terms of how we speak about it. So when we talk about cardiac axis, generally we're talking about the ventricles and the ventricles only, okay? Um, there, there are... Uh, e EKG machines that can, you know, get upper level access and stuff like that. And that kind of stuff is usually better left to a physician or a cardiologist um, when it comes to diagnosing things. All right, so let's talk about flow. So this is how energy is actually flowing through the heart. It's leaving these uh, conduction cells and going to all the tissues during contraction, okay? And they're all over the place. This is what I meant when I said there's too many to average individually, okay? So when you take all these different directions and you add them all up and then you divide them by the number of uh, impulses, you're going to get a general direction of flow, right? The average direction of flow. That's your cardiac axis. So if they're all average, general direction of flow. And under normal circumstances, it follows the green arrow, right? Which would be good. If all the electricity is flowing through the heart normally, chances are there's nothing pathologically or physiologically that's going wrong, which is always a good sign, okay? So how do we measure it? When we say so many degrees, what does that even mean? It is measured by the angle you can see on your screen. Okay, So to, to give you a little bit of a better example, I'll put a protractor up here. And that is the angle that you're reading. Okay, And as you can see, this upside down protractor, if everything went fairly perfectly, you would be looking at a 30 degree axis or so here. And that is the, the core component of what axis is. In order to shift this one way or the other, Something must be wrong, or maybe wrong is not the best term, but something's not quite right. It's not normal. It crosses into the remarkable stage. So that's why axis is important. That's why we measure it, and that's what it is. Because if it's normal, everything's okay, right? Most times, everything's okay. But when the axis begins to shift, that is sometimes an indication that something major is happening in the heart, and we have to address that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.